Hey guys, this is Cal Jordi, and today I will talk to you about a topic that is dear to my heart, and that is completing relationships. Why that's important? Why is it important to complete relationships? See, in my in my past, I've uh, I was raised in a different culture, and uh, you know, I uh, it was my relationship with my father was a little bit of bumpy road, right? So, um, and you know, in the process, you know, until you know, recently, I had it that my dad was the reason for my challenges in my life. Uh, you know, is my reason for you know why I you know I had to you know go and leave and start a new life somewhere else and dealing with my insecurities, uh, dealing with my relationships with women and, you know, um, having these, uh, you know, being an introvert and everything has to come as a challenge and money has to come as a challenge and, you know, you know, their belief was that, you know, his belief was, you know, money comes hard and comes with a lot of hard work and you got to spit blood sometimes to make money. And um, I remember one time I used to help him uh, during summertime. Uh, doing construction work and tiles and stuff and uh, you know after school in the summer I uh, vacation I go and just you know help him and I remember one time that he just uh, you know he was just doing his thing and he's laying tiles and then he stops and he looks at me and he says look I'm bleeding blood for you okay so for the first instant as a teenager the first reaction that I that I wanted that I did was I just want to go and hide underneath a rock because I was the cause of the suffering for my father and I don't want to I don't want I don't want to wish this on anybody to cause someone to bleed because I exist okay so um, as a result I made a decision in the past that I will go and do it on my own that I'm gonna just show my dad that you know I don't need you I don't need you to suffer anymore and I'm just gonna go do it on my own so fair enough you know I was 19 20 years old you know I left uh, I left the country where I'm originally from which is Lebanon and I come here to the United States and uh, I go to school and I graduated and you know I started my own life but until you know until just recently, I always had it that my dad was a reason for my suffering. <laughs> There's a reason why I just, you know, had to deal with all these insecurities and the lack of self-confidence that I had at some point. And that background of relatedness with my dad is showed up in my relationship, not just with my dad, showed up in my relationship with women, showed up with my relationship with friends, uh, you know, with even with money, dealing with money. So yeah, I just go and spend money left and right so I could feel validated, so I can feel loved. So I feel like, you know, I'm worth it, that I'm worthy, that I'm valuable. Uh, with women, I just wanted to go and prove myself that I'm lovable. So I wanted to go and date and meet women. So I get that, you know, temporary sense of, um, you know, validation and approval. Um, you know, with my family, I feel like, you know, I need to be the, the helper, the, the supporter, the, the, the one that, you know, uh, look what I'm doing. I'm the big, you know, son and, you know, and, and the eldest. So I got to make sure that my life is all together. I'm making enough money so I can help everybody else, so I can be a role model. So a lot of pressure on that. So, you know, a lot of that just, you know, came from the background of relatedness, you know, with that decision that a teenager that made, um, you know, way back then. So why am I sharing that with you? Because consider you as well have made decisions in the past that is showing up in the future and is dictating who you are today, okay? So we might think that our past is in the past where it belongs, but really, if you think about it, and I'm going to take you through an example right now, that you will find out that actually our past is our, in our future. So let me show, let me give you an example, and I got this from um, you know taking a lot of seminars with Landmark, and that's one thing that I got is, you know, <clears throat> for example, you know, you it's Friday afternoon, it's four o'clock, and that's the example they use, and uh, now you're at work, and now your boss comes over and tells you, okay, well, there's a fire that we need to put off, which just means that you need to have to do some work and extra work to stay over time. And, you know, your immediate reaction is what? You know, obviously you gotta do your job, you're gonna be subordinate, but deep down inside, you're probably not gonna feel so good about it, right? You have to stay late and you had some, you know, things going on, so you don't wanna stay late. However, consider that you have a ticket 
for you know your favorite vacation like the Caribbeans for example or Hawaii like right there in your drawer okay with your uh, with your soulmate <laughs> with a person that you really want to spend time with or with your best friend or somebody that you really enjoy that you go in uh, to this to this vacation with and it's right there in your drawer now are you gonna feel the same way like resigned about it that your boss asked you to stay a little late knowing that you have a ticket that's waiting for you, you know, later, you know, the next day you go into Hawaii, most likely you wouldn't, would you, right? So again, now you go to the Caribbeans or you just lay on the beach right there and you just, you know, uh, right now it's Sunday, you know, afternoon and you're laying down on the beach and now fair enough, you see, you know, you hear an airplane just, you know, going right on top of your head and now you look up and you see the airplane and you remember that, you know, in a few hours, <laughs> you need to go back to your life. You need to go back where you live and you go back to your job, to your life. And now how do you feel? <laughs> So if you were like most people, you would feel like, oh, do I have to go back? I have to leave this, you know, behind. And you're like, you're sipping on your favorite drink. And now you have to leave all that back behind and go back to work, right? So consider now that our past right now is in our future. It's not really in the past where it belongs. So though that you're sitting on that beach and now you're enjoying, you know, you're supposed to be enjoying the moment, but you're already in the future. You're thinking, you know, you're living in the future. So now the same thing goes with the question with the past. Is your past the same thing as in the future? The answer is yes. Consider that because these relationships that happened in the past is dictating who we are in the future. And it's coming, we're coming from that place, a decision we made since we were grown-ups and we're growing up and that's affecting who we are today. So for us in order for, to create new possibilities, to create new future that, that we're excited about, it's important to complete these relationships, to put a closure on these relationships because you know, physics, is, you can't have two things that exist at the same place at the same time. Right? So you got this pen right here and you got this hand right here, let's say. The hand taking space, you can't put the uh, pen, you know, the, the Sharpie inside the hand, unless, you know, you're going to have to have a piece of metal and that's going to hurt, right? But otherwise, you can't have two things that exist in the same place, same time. Now, quantum physics has showed otherwise, but let's stick with Newtonian physics for now. And which means to you that in order for us to create a new future, a new possibility, something from the past that's taken space, we need to complete it and get rid of it, okay? At least put a closure to it because it's taking space, it's taking negative space. So this, that's why it's important for us to complete those relationships. And if we don't complete these relationships, then we're gonna keep repeating the same thing over and over and over, and then we're gonna want to expect different results, and you know what's the definition of that. It's insanity, isn't it? Right? So, now, what is the process, what, what is relationships? What, what is that thing that we call, you know, completing these relationships? Relationships in the past, relationships with you know with the parents, relationships with friends, relationships with coworkers, with boss, with 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 with, with um, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, ex-husbands, uh, um, all of these are relationships. And consider that you know, let's say you had a bad breakup with a woman in the past, and now you want to meet a new woman, and you start looking for what that new woman doesn't have with your ex-wife because you don't want to replicate the experience but guess what with that you are creating a future that is affected and impacted by your ex-wife by your past one way or another so if you are you know raised in, in a broken uh, you know kind of family which we all are one way or another right and you know, let's say you are you know you had didn't have a good relationship with one one of your parents or both and so that's why you want to make sure that when you grow up and you have your kids, you want to give them what you didn't have, right? It's, 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 it's logical, right? It makes sense. Well, guess what? Because you didn't, we didn't have that relationship with your parents, because we had this broken relationship with one of your parents, now you are changing that behavior so you would have a relationship with your, with your um, children, right? So it is impacting our future. So any, all the past is impacting the future. I was like, okay, great, I got it, Cal, awesome. So now what, what would I do with it? Well, consider that, you know, when we're, the, the, the impact of that would be that we are basing our, our future based on the past. 
and you know they were hindering the possibilities we have we are not exploring we're not you know coming out of our patterns we keep repeating the same pattern over and over and that's where the the rat race comes in that's why you know they did a study to show that people who leave their job uh, you know 90 percent of them they will get you know a similar job with a similar pay okay so is that going to be fulfilling is that what you're committed to? So if you're committed towards stepping outside your comfort zone and creating the life that you always wanted, if you look at all these successful people, they're making a lot of money, they, 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 they have healthy relationships, they, they're healthy, uh, you know, mind and body and fit, and, and they're having a good life and spiritually and having, you know, all these things, the good things that we always want in our life, consider that they, their mindset is different. And that's what it all starts with. 80% of our success is within between our ears and only 20% with our actions that we take. So it's important to start working on the thoughts because thoughts will create feelings and the feelings we would dictate our behavior in a way. How many of you sometimes that you know you're having one of these bad days, right? And though you're competent in what you're doing, okay, let's say if you you know go to your job, your career, but you're just not feeling it, so you have lousy behavior, you have lousy results. On the other hand, sometimes you're just feeling great, you're having upstate, you're upbeat, you're motivated, you're excited, and you know, though that you know something comes out of nowhere, you're unexpected, but you're able to handle it very well because you are feeling, you're in the moment, you're in the groove, right? You are in the zone. So that's what we're talking about. That state, it dictates your behavior. So it's very important for us to work on that section, what's called the state control. With that, that will gonna change our behavior. All right, good. So now, how are we gonna do it? How are we gonna complete relationships? So I'm gonna share with you a pattern right now that is called the RIPI. That's right, RIPI. R stands for responsibility. Okay, so I'm gonna write them down right now. It stands for responsibility. What kind of responsibility? 100% responsibility. You would want to take 100% responsibility for one thing that we can take responsibility for in that breakdown in that relationship with whoever that person is. It could be a parent, could be a wife, ex-wife, uh, ex-girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, any anybody. And, and consider that you know a lot of common questions get. Well, you know, it's not my fault. When when I say responsibility, it's it's not pointing a finger and saying it's fault. When we're coming responsibility, we call it ownership. That's ownership. You're taking ownership of what happened because we're creating what happens. So, and this will give us power. There's a, uh, there's a quote, and I give credit where credit is due, and that is, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space lies our power and our freedom. Our power and freedom to do what? That's right, you got it, to choose, to choose, right, to choose. So we are the creators, we are the captains of our ships, we are the creators of our destiny. And though we think that it's, it's someone else's you know, fault, and, my, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm sure you have a lot of legitimate um, you know, excuses or, 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 or proof that to show that it wasn't your fault, I'm not talking about being fault, just you are the cause of this happening one way or another, whatever happened. You are the, we are the cause of what happens. And once we really get that, once you accept that we are the cause of what's happening in our life, that gives us power. That gives you power so you could take ownership and say that, you know, nothing outside of myself has caused me to be in the situation that I'm in right now. Because now you're giving your power away. But when you take ownership and say, I'm responsible for what happened, right now you are taking ownership, that means you're claiming your power back. And that, my friend, will give you the power to create. The power to create whatever possibility and future that you want for your life. Okay? So, for find one thing. Now you say, Kyle, okay, so great. So find one thing good. So you can always find a one thing, yes? You could, you know, and that makes it easier for us when you take responsibility for one thing. You know, you can take responsibility for, uh, you know, uh, find one thing. I take responsibility, let's say, if you are, uh, you know, if you're a boss, you're a manager, take responsibility when you're a subordinate, say, I take responsibility, I take, you know, I came across a little bit harsh with a friend, you can take responsibility for, you know, not being up to date with them, not catching up with them on the phone with an ex-wife or, 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 you know, or an ex-husband, you could, you know, say, I take responsibility for not being, not spending a lot of time with you, I've been so wrapped up with work, 
so he can bring money for us and that's as a reason for us that's you know some some of that you know distance starts happening you know uh, take responsibility for you know getting comfortable not spicing up that relationship not thinking outside the box how can I make this relationship keep it and maintain it right I got comfortable you can take responsibility a lot of things you can take responsibility for uh, with, with your parents for for example in my case, you know, I take responsibility with my dad that, you know, I, I, I blame him all these years. Like, for, he was the reason for me being the victim. He was the reason for me to be suffering all that much. He's the reason for, you know, having low self-confidence and all that stuff. And as a result, you know, I, that's when I share with you the next thing, his impact. Okay, what was the impact? I'm going to share with you a little bit. But right now, you know, you just share one thing that you can take responsibility for. And now, why, why one thing? Because when you share one thing, there's a law in the universe. There's a law of in communication that's called the law of reciprocation. The law of reciprocation. What does that mean? You know, when you send a Christmas card to someone, someone else will, might send you a Christmas card next year, okay? At least if they have some social etiquette. If someone invites you to a birthday, you invite them back. If someone say hello, you say hello back. Even on the other hand of that, someone, you know, apologize. You know, you get in a conflict with someone and you apologize. And, you know, you apologize to you, you know what? I'm sorry, I, I went offline yesterday. I went, you know, I went overboard yesterday. And you will apologize, say, you know what, uh, you know, I shouldn't have said what I've said. And now you're like having conflict, who's more apologetic, right? That's called the law of reciprocation, the law of reciprocation. So with the law of reciprocation, it's important that you just trust in it. Don't be attached to it. Meaning, it's not you want to share 100% responsibility with someone and expect that they will share the 100% responsibility too. You're doing it for ourselves. you're doing it for you. So you can clean that slate and complete that relationship so you can create something new, that's all. So you're not doing it because you are wanting something in return. It would be nice if they reciprocate that and the law of the reciprocation usually works 90% of the time. But you don't want to come from a place of attachment. There's another saying in Eastern philosophy that attachment, any association with it, brings endless misery. As attachment, any association with it, brings endless misery. When we attach to something, that's gonna bring us misery because you know whether it's a great compliment, someone give us a great compliment, ah, oh, yes, say more about me, say more, oh, thank you, I appreciate that, thanks for saying that, that really makes my heart warm, right? And consider when someone says something bad about you, it's like, oh, you're this and you're that and you're this, like, oh, why would you say that? And you become defensive, you know, defend yourself. That's where attachment comes in because people are speaking and, and, and they're, 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 whether they're giving a compliment or they're giving, um, you know, a criticism, they are sharing how they're feeling about themselves. They are sharing who they are with you, okay? So, you know, don't get, get attached. If someone gives you a compliment, thank you, okay? If someone is criticizing you and hammering you down, thank you for sharing. That doesn't make me that person. Um, Buddha once said that um, if someone gives you a gift and you refuse to take that gift to whom that gift belongs, if someone gives you a gift and you refuse to take that gift to whom that gift belongs. It belongs to the person that was giving the gift. So if you're giving someone a gift and, you, and someone else refuses to take it, that gift belongs to you, right? So we, which means that someone is giving you criticism and you don't accept it, you don't take it from them, that means that gift belongs to that person. So we have the choice to either accept the gift or to, you know, and, and get defensive about it and get wrapped up around it, or we just say, okay, Thank you for offering me that gift. That doesn't make me who I am. And now the gift stays with that person. All right? So 100% responsibility for one thing and, and trust that the law of reciprocation will kick in. And if it doesn't, you're doing this for yourself so you can go, go to sleep at night knowing that you completed that relationship and now you can create something else. Okay? And many times people will come back later and they will take responsibility for something. So don't be attached to it. That's the key right here. Okay? Moving on to the next step. I. I stands for impact. You want to state the impact. Okay? Impact on who? You want to state the impact. Most people, they state the impact, you know, oh, you know, I, I apologize, uh, you know, I came across a little bit harsh, I was having a bad week, I had, you know, I, um, you know one of my family members got in a car accident or whatever. You start like sharing with them like, what's really going on in your life, that's the impact on you. But people, though they may care, but this is not what they want to hear. 
People want to hear how that impacts them. So the key here is they want to share the impact on them. Okay? The impact on them. So you would sound something like this, you know, I, got, I came across a little bit harsh, I got the impact on you that you probably felt that you were spoken down to, all feel felt disrespected, something like that. Okay? So with that case, now you are creating that level of empathy, that bond with that person. Because now you are speaking to what they're feeling. People connect on an emotional level, we don't connect on a logical level. So you're able now to speak to that feeling, the emotion that they probably have went through it. And you want to assume it, and they will correct you. The thing is, they will correct you. Once you open that space for them, they will correct you if that's it, this is how they felt about it or not. But the key here is to actually, you know, put yourself in their shoes and see the world from their eyes. How was that like for them, you know, when they were interacting with you at that specific time when the breakdown in that relationship happened or the breakdown in communication had happened, okay? Good. So now that you stated the impact, you created the empathy, you created that, you know, bond. Now it diffuses, you know, whatever it's something there is there because now they're connected with you and they know that you got how they felt about it. People, they just want to be heard. They want to be understood pretty much. And everything else comes later as a solution. But right now, the main thing is to diffuse the emotions, to get the emotions out of the way. And the most important and the most powerful tool you have in your arsenals, and that is empathy. Empathy is just putting yourself in their shoes and seeing the world from their own eyes. How is that like for them to be, you know, in that position and putting yourself in their shoes and, and, and find out like, okay, if I were them, how would I have felt? Okay? And I know it can be challenging sometimes, and yet that's what's going to create, you know, the empathy. That's going to, it's going to open your horizon. That's going to make you a better leader. Leaders are empathetic. They're great listeners and they really can speak to the emotions in their group with their followers. That's why their followers love these leaders. You know, we're talking about, you know, Nelson Mandela, for example. This man has been in prison for like, what, 30, 35 years? And, you know, someone will come out of that, you know, angry and upset and you wanna get, you know, you wanna get everybody, all the white people out of there. No, he was empathetic. He was, he got, he put himself in their shoes. Like, how would I felt if, if I'm there in this country and I'm, you know, in building something new and I have somebody that is against me and they want me out of there. So they want to put you in prison. So they, I empathize with them and they were able to speak to the emotion. And as a result, you know, he was able to, you know, have his nation where they are today. All right. Now, P stands for promise you want to make a new promise okay a new promise a new promise a new promise so that it won't happen in the future so it sounds something like this you know i want to make you know i promise that you know from now on when i come over and talk to you i'll make sure i put my emotions aside or i'll, I'll deal with my own emotions before i come talk to you or i'll make sure that i speak slower when i'm talking to you or i'll, I'll make sure i train you before or with with a friend i'll make sure that i'll catch up with you more often or you know with, with some with like with an ex that you don't want to have anything to do with them right that's fine just make a promise like look you know you can count on me that you know we are moving um in different directions and I just want to be complete with that. And you know, I wish you the best. And you can always count on me that I w have nothing but you know, good will and good wishes to you. Simple. What is the count? What can they count on you for? Even if you want nothing to do with that person, but you're completing something that's taking space. Always remember that you're doing it for you, so you can put something positive, and you can create something in that space that's taking, you know, space in you, and you can create something positive in it. Okay. All right, so you're making a new promise on something sounds something like this, you know, you, I, I promise or I make a new commitment or you can count on me for or whatever that is. Any of those language, you make a new promise. This way you are creating the future. You are creating something, you know, for the future with that person. Okay, and I stands for intention. Okay, you want to declare the intention of the relationship. You want to declare the intention. <clears throat> So it's very important because now you are creating the context of the relationship. Because my intention is to have a uh, you know a teamwork relationship with you. 
my intention is to have to have a loving you know husband wife relationship girlfriend boyfriend relationship my intention is to have a uh, a uh, partnership with you uh, if my intention is to have a friendship you know parental you know um, partnership with you you know you can always clear the intention why you can you're creating the bigger picture right now you're creating the context which you know you will step into with that person now they know where you're coming from this was very important because that creates a big picture anything that is you know wrapped up around details it will be taken care of if they're present to the big picture okay so in my case you know i remember when i shared that with my, my dad and i was like i took responsibility for blaming him and i said the impact on him that he felt that he's just being avoided i was been avoiding him i was treating him the same way he was treating me he was very generous with me he was you know simply you know giving everything he could he was a hard worker and yet my relationship with him has always been around respect and fear it was not that friendship at the time so i was treating him the same way when i grew up that's the funny part. I was being generous with him. I was making sure his life is, you know, his finances, you know, things like that. He's making sure that he's secured. And yet, would I sit down and play a chess game with him? No. Would I sit down and have a beer with him? No. Right? So I was kind of like unconsciously treating him the same way he was treating me, not knowing that I was doing that until I really got present, you know, to that pattern. And I started really going in depth with it. And I was able to share that with him. So I made a new promise saying it's like, you know, in the future, I promise that, you know, I will be spending more time with you. You know, I'll be, you know, in communication with you. If there's anything that I don't like about your habits, I'll be just, you know, pointing that out without having to be fear that, okay, you know, there, 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 is that, uh, there is that barrier in the way, okay? And I stands for intention because my intention is to create, you know, that relationship that, you know, I want, which is a friendship with you. Okay, simple as that. And consider that, you know, they might not respond right away because people in general, they're not used to this level of openness and they come across a little bit, whoa, you know, I'm not used to that because unfortunately we're walking, like we're having this shield, you know, uh, we're not used to open up like that. So this is a very powerful tool. So when you share it, don't expect someone to right away reciprocate. You know, they expect like, okay, got it, thanks. And you may walk away thinking like, huh, I just opened up to that person and this was the response maybe a day later a week later maybe a month later sometimes they will come back and it's like you know what I appreciate the time that you came over and opened to me and matter of fact I take responsibility for this part and now the things are just you know will flow but the key here is to don't be attached that they will reciprocate a lot of the time they get overwhelmed with that level of authenticity that you're sharing with them and they will resist it and then they will just slowly but surely soak it in and then they will come back and they would complete and if they don't that's fine at least you complete it for yourself you got your ownership and your power back and that's the whole key for that so what are the four steps? Step number one, take 100% responsibility for one thing that you can take responsibility for that in that relationship. And you know, trust the law of reciprocation will kick in and they will take responsibility for their part. Step number two is take the impact on them. How does that you know, cause or how that may have you know, caused them to feel? And step number three, make a new promise. What, are they, what they can count on you for? And step, and step number four, which is I, stands for the intention. What is the intention of the relationship that you're creating with that person? I hope that helps. Uh, you know, it really made a big difference in my life, and I hope that it will make a difference in your life. Um, you know, go ahead and sign up for my newsletter at fearlesstransformation.com, and I'll be sharing with you these, uh, you know, learning modules uh, just for free. You know, just enjoy them, make a difference, go take action. I, I, my assignment to you, my challenge to you is right now, you know, go ahead through this four step process, bring a pen and paper, and write them down. Write that person you want to complete that relationship with, and go through those four steps and make that phone call. Growth only takes place outside of our comfort zone. So only when we're uncomfortable, that's when we're growing, okay? Thank you very much, and uh, I will talk to you in our next newsletter. Cheers.